afternoon. I am here in my capacity as Shadow Minister of National Security, alongside my colleague, Shadow Minister Attorney General Michael Scott, to renew the Progressive Labor Party's call for a comprehensive public independent investigation into the events of Friday, 2nd of December, 2016. When citizens, including women and seniors, engaged in peaceful assembly are pepper sprayed by police officers, it is imperative that a thorough and transparent examination take place to restore vital confidence in the government and the police. We were the first to call for this public independent inquiry. The Speaker of the House, the Honorable K.H. Randolph Horton, made a similar request after declaring the police action as violent, violence against our citizens. The Premier informed the country that he requested an investigation. However, he has given no assurances that the findings will be made public and has failed to commit to ensuring the independence of this inquiry. Additionally, the Minister of Natural Security, Jeffrey Barron, hasn't mentioned the need for an independent inquiry at all. This simply is not good enough. The public deserves an independent investigation so quite frankly, do the police. They also would benefit from such an investigation. Canisters of pepper spray are prohibited weapons under the Firearms Act 1973, for which the police receive an exemption. The possession and discharge of them can lead an ordinary citizen to a period of impri imprisonment, such as the gravity of their use. There is precedence in Bermuda for a public and independent investigation when the discharge of a firearm by the Bermuda Police Service has occurred. Certainly, police policy has been that if a discharge of a weapon has occurred, an independent, experienced law enforcement officer investigate the incident. In 2001, a trained ERT member of the BPS shot an Arwen baton round, also known as a rubber bullet at a suspect in accordance with established policy an independent investigator from Canada was brought in to disclose the findings and they were released to the public. It should also be noted how rapidly the, the Bermuda Police Service responded to the request from the Royal Cayman Islands Police for their assistance to independently investigate a serious and deadly police shooting on January 6th and how slow the Bermuda government is to provide the Bermudian public with the same commitment to independently investigate police action here. We urge the governor, who has constitutional responsibility for police operations, to ensure that a public independent investigation be done. The public needs to be assured that protocols and policies designed to ensure police and public safety were complied with. Given the seriousness of this event and the political context in which it occurred, the public have every right to know who in authority outside of Bermuda Police Service was advised in advance of the intended deployment of the police support unit, the tactics, operations, and equipment available to them, including pepper spray. We have the firm view that the public deserves to know whether the governor, premier, or the minister for national security will support the call for a public independent investigation of these events that occurred on Friday, December 2nd, 2016, made by the Progressive Labor Party and the Speaker of the House of Assembly. We will continue to press for this until a full explanation of events that happened on December 2nd occurs. Thank you. Members of the media, uh, to my colleague, the Shadow Minister of National Security, uh, to the
public relation, relations officer of the party, Ms. Liana Hall. Uh, good afternoon. The uh, events of December 2016 tore at Bermuda's national fabric, and it left all right-thinking people alarmed and outraged. Whilst Premier Michael Dunkley has requested an investigation, he has not indicated any parameters for such. With harm caused to otherwise innocent, peaceful citizens, exercising their constitutional rights of protest and the decision makers more closely, most closely connected with the events being at the very top of government. The importance of a judicial public inquiry is heightened. It is only the judicial branch that is free of conflict to appropriately examine the incident. I made a patty request on December 30th of, this, of last year and was re informed of it, the receipt of same yesterday. The Patty Act requires a response within six weeks. However, I urge the government to act on this request for an inquiry without delay, as the public shouldn't have to rely on individual requests for information. The importance of revealing the political and tactical considerations of this event can't be diminished. Furthermore, critical to the inquiry will be the victims and the public having an opportunity to be heard. Judges are very experienced at determining facts. Therefore, the Progressive Labour Party makes the recommendation to separate the inquiry into two phases. The first, the investigative stage, and the second, establishing recommendations. The opposition further recommends that there be an implementation action plan whereby relevant parties would have to feed back how they have implemented the points made by the inquiry within 12 months. It is felt that only with effective follow-up can the inquiry in avoid becoming just the delivery of eloquent words, rather resulting in lessons learned. On another matter, which is equally relevant to the interest of holding government to account and preventing abuse of power, and that is the proposed Public Service Commission Amendment Regulations, which I have already commented on. Yet, there seems to be no such action or response made on the concerns highlighted by senior civil servants and the BPSU. The impartiality of civil service is a guiding and fundamental protected principle under the Bermuda Constitution. These amendments introduce, these amendments introduce the frankly unconstitutional risk of transforming the role of the PSC from an impartial appointing authority for civil servants into a politicized semi-executive body, as noted by former Cabinet Secretary Mr. Donald Scott. Further to my statement released in December, I remind the government that proposals for changes to the Public Service Commission regulations demand careful, considerate thought and respect for the fundamental principle of impartiality. Despite the later call by, recall by the Premier using unconvincing excuses of prematurity of this inappropriate publication. The government's foolhardy approach on this issue should remain at the forefront of our minds. And so we call for a complete independent judicial public inquiry, and I'm happy to join my colleague, the Shadow Minister of national security in urging the government to act on these matters. Thank you. We're happy to take questions if there are any. Um, I don't care to respond to Bob Stewart in any way of his opinion on the matter. I think we're only concerned about what will happen by those with responsibility as to these events. 
and we've outlined our position on that quite clearly. To I don't uh, mind um, putting before the public uh, both the substance of our initial core pr positions about there being an overriding need for public inquiry into these events. So serious were they. Of course, there will be commentators, and they'll be reckless, or they'll be ill-considered, uh, or they'll be uh, irresponsible. What we're talking about here is just a tiny step towards ensuring that the democracy and the democratic arrangements in our country are observed. Throughout December the 2nd, the line was a peaceful citizens exercising democratic rights of peaceful protest. And they were reduced to uh, a violent interjection of police officers and then adding injury to that, the use of pepper spray that harmed peaceful citizens exercising their constitutional rights of protest. I place that, res that response and that retort in contrast to either Mr. Stewart or anyone else in the country who have a view on this that is not consistent with the facts. We were both there. Thanks. And man, I say, Mr. Mr. Uh, Trot, the only comment I wish to say about that is that Mr. Stewart wasn't there. We were. And our position has been made clear by myself and the shadow minister and by the party already on these matters. And that is for those with, with, with responsibility, I say again. It is their responsibility to ensure an independent inquiry is done. That will best be in the interest of the public. Have you, um, have you been able to confirm whether Taser was used on that day? Because I'm hearing conflicting reports on that one. Do you have any information? No, and I think th these are the questions that a proper inquiry will answer as to the circumstances, what prohibited weapons were actually used or on site and, in, and engaged in what happened on that day. And this is the, the, the very questions that a proper independent investigation and inquiry can answer in a very dispassionate, objective way, of which we all can examine and come to some conclusion on. So that question is one that really should be the subject of the appropriate investigation and inquiry. And so that, so that we all can have answers, the press, us who are involved with the political process, and certainly those who experienced the very events of that day, who were there, who saw what happened, who were the victims of what happened, unfortunate victims. So we hope that inquiry is taken on so that that very question can be answered. Okay, now it's taken already a few weeks since uh, not just you, but the Premier and everybody else, other organizations called for an inquiry. In the meantime, I think we have to ensure that a proper process is deployed. And this is what a proper investigation at the highest level will do. Because once it's clear, by all concern, what the facts are, then if any steps are to be taken against anyone who was involved with the incidents of December 2nd, if that needs to be subject to a criminal action or civil action or some other action, then it can be done in the proper manner. At this point, jumping to conclusions as to what was seen or what happened, and then essentially saying, well, this is what should happen to those persons, may satisfy certain, certain, a certain emotional need for justice and for answers and for something to be done. But I think we need to have a dispassionate process to look at it. And of course, there's plenty of footage that's been put on social media and other forms and pictures as what happened. Well, subject those to the test of a proper process of inquiry to determine what happened. And if there's any need for action against whether it be members of the BPS, um, whether it be the, those in charge of BPS, whether members of the government, i.e. the cabinet, or those persons who were involved on the site, that inquiry can satisfy 
that need, but it will be done in a way that brings equity and justice to all who feel that some action has to be taken. Yeah. Can I concur and join my colleague in saying that it would be premature, uh, no matter how great the, the need for some type of cathartic outcome on the part of those who suffer. It would be premature uh, to uh, assign or to take action prior to the investigation. Uh, I spoke with the Commissioner of Police and his team. Um, everybody has a view as to what happened. Uh, we are fortunate, we're lucky to have the footage, and so that will form important parts of the evidence. And then, of course, you have members of the public uh, who were there, uh, including members of the opposition, who will be able to tender evidence. And that would be, as the shadow minister indicates, uh, that will give assurance that this matter is being pursued uh, fairly and, and, and just, justly. I mean, the reason why I ask is that there's already been a suspension of one police officer for violating, for allegations of violating um, protocols. The I think that just offers some assurance, even from the police, that their procedures are alive, well, and to the extent that um, an officer has been uh, suspended, put under this process, consistent with the police procedures, uh, whether they're discipline or protocol, uh, breaches, uh, uh, arrangements in the police, that should give us some assurance, first, that those uh, procedures are taking place in a normal way within the police, and it should add uh, energy and, and fuel to the call that uh, we are jointly making today for the overall public, uh, judicial public inquiry. Jonathan? Uh, sir, obviously, um, I'm not saying anyone deserves to get pepper spray that day. Uh, it was a distressing day. But, I mean, a lot of people point out when we refer to it as a peaceful protest, they, they were blocking Parliament. There was the argument that could be made that the police were simply doing their job and then stopping them um, to, to clear the case. I wish you were there, Jonathan. Um, the sequence of events uh, with which the citizens that I'm here to both defend and, and call for an invest inquiry about were uh, citizens who were on the streets of Parliament Street and Church Street. Now, I accept, and I'll come straight to it, that the issue that has uh, bedeviled some of these uh, uh, out outcomes or, or the aftermath has been the fact that the gates were blocked. That's clear, and nobody is shrinking from that. And uh, I prefer to take the, the line in length that protest of legitimate breaches of the social contract are going to involve breaking of regulations and laws. It's going to. This is not new, and I wish we would all stop being so uh, uh, focused on seeking to justify a complete uh, uh, disproportionate response uh, to what was a clear indication of a summary offense breach or a parliamentary act breach. Uh, of those sections. Everybody knew what was going on. The social contract had been completely uh, breached or abridged, and people were taking their constitutional right of protesting. I think it's very clear um, that per people were pepper sprayed on that day. Now, that is what's very clear, yes, and people were assembled in protest of something that they felt strongly about. And there were certain actions that obviously were taken on that day by those persons. But we're not here to adjudicate whether they were right or wrong, essentially. We want, and we're calling for this so that all of the facts around what happened on that day can be properly examined, rather than attaching value to, well, did, were they right to stand in front of the gate 
and um, exercise their right of assembly and whether their restriction of those entering was wrong or not. Let's subject all of those questions to a proper independent review so that everybody can understand. But the incident on that day of pepper spraying persons who were not armed, who were essentially peacefully assembled, that is what, where the concern is truly should lie. And why that happened and why that was ordered to be happened and who participated in that process. As I recall, I am not sure that such a deployment of the PSU in that form has been done since the disturbances of 1977. Now, did those conditions exist? And did that merit the response that was taken against those persons? Now, we know in 77, the conditions were very different. But did those conditions exist on December 2nd? Most people don't think so. But let's subject this, this to a proper independent review so that all the questions that are presented to us around the rights of people to assemble, whether the actions taken on that day by them um, what, how that contributed to what happened, and whether the actions taken by the police were disproportionate or not, or proportionate to the circumstances that they felt they were presented with. What caused them to come to the decision to deploy the PSU in that manner? Armed with prohibited weapons that are prohibited to most of our citizens. Those are the questions. You know, we don't need to be adjudicating whether the persons in front of the House of Assembly gates were right or wrong. That's not why we should be here today trying to do. We're looking for the proper answers that everyone who's concerned about what happened can get the answers that they should get and that those responsible are held to proper account. That is what we should be seeking, first and foremost. And then we can come to a conclusion after that information has been properly um, pursued. And only an investigation in an independent manner can, in our view, bring about that. Might I also add is that I also, along with my colleague, have submitted a PACI request to the Buna Police Service around uh, the events of that day. And I, too, have received a confirmation of receipt and are awaiting further response to that request. <laughs>